The action potential arrives in the axon terminal and this causes the calcium channels in the membrane to open allowing calcium to move into the cell in the synaptic nerve. And this increased calcium causes the synaptic vesicles to be filled with the calcium and the acetylcholine to fuse with the membrane. And the acetylcholine is released from the synaptic knob by exocytosis into the synaptic cleft. Then this acetylcholine is picked up by the receptors on the motor end plate of the skeletal muscle. Then the next step is the sodium potassium channels open allowing the sodium ions to pass through into the muscle cell fiber and this is caused by the act caused by the action potential which depolarizes it. Then the acetylcholine esterase is an enzyme which is, comes into the gap, the synaptic cleft, which is where I'm pointing to now. It breaks the acetylcholine in half to acidic acid and choline which is pumped back into the synaptic knob and the syn synaptic vesicles. The increase in the sodium ions inside the muscle cell initiates an action potential on the sarcolemma. The action potential travels down the sarcolemma into the T-tubules and stimulates the release of calcium from the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And this is where the calcium has been stored and held in large amounts by the calcicrestrin and the release is into the sarcoplasm of the muscle cell. Calcium floods over the thin filaments and binds to troponin. This pulls tropomycin off the active site on the actin. The head of the thick filament is in high energy and because it's stretched out and it has ADP and potassium attached and this head leaps to bind on the exposed active sites on the thin filaments forming a cross bridge. Once it bound to the active site the head pivots to the low energy state changing its configuration and releasing ADP as the thin filaments cross over the thick filaments. ATP binded to the myosin head causing it to break free from the active site on the thin filament. Then this ADP is converted to ADP and phosphate. then this myosin head becomes energized and goes back to its high energy state. The ATP energy allows the calcium to be pumped back into the SR, into the T-tubules. And this, they eventually attach to the calciquestrin and the, where the calcium is stored once again in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This allows the tripomyosin to once again cover the active sites. And this causes the relaxation of the muscle. Eventually the sarcoplasm concentration drops and the ATP in the myosin head waits for another action potential. This is the entire whole muscle cell. And this is the fascicle, represented by this section. And inside the muscle cell, the fascicle is a myofiber, represented by the pink. 
and these Meyer fibrils within them are the Meyer filaments which have contractile proteins, actin and myosin and this is covered in the sacrolama. This is the sacrolama and it's the basic functioning unit of striated muscle. It will all contract and get shorter when the thick and thin filaments slide over each other. The sacrolama shortens. It's a highly ordered unit of thick and thin filaments. The brown with the beads are represented by the thick. The yellow is a thin filament. And we have the M line, which sits over here. And that's where the thick filaments join. Then we have the A band from here to here. And this is the dark section of the muscle. Then we have the I bands from here onwards. And this is the light section. Then we have the Z discs, which also known as the Z line. And this is separated, where thin filaments are attached. Then we also have a shorter band within the dark section, and this is called the H zone, from here to here.